Joining us now, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, Jr. C.J., let's start with you. Your offensive line answered the call. How proud are you of this group of guys who had never played next to each other until this week? Yeah, first and foremost, I just want to give all glory and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, he just gave me a, a, a blessing to be on this team with my amazing teammates. Uh, it's been a blessing to work with these guys. The guys up front, all I asked them to do was fight, man. And we did that from, from tight end to linemen to running backs to receivers. We fight our tail off, man. D'Amico always preaches a mentality. We brought that mentality today. So I appreciate those guys. Establishing the run was a key for you guys. You did that immediately. It opened up the game for you and Nico Collins to connect all day. How were you able to do that? Yeah, it starts with the run game. You got to establish the run. Um, um, and we got down, we would have some great drives. Uh, we got to get back in the draw board, score touchdowns in the red zone. But I mean, when when the when we needed to answer, when it was down, uh, we had to come back, man, and, and we made those plays. So we make the plays, even though you didn't have a perfect game, it still feels good, but you got to get better. Will Anderson Jr., you guys never let up on this Pittsburgh offense. What did it take? What is the culture that you guys are creating here in Houston? Man, it's just a swarm culture, man. Everybody get into the ball, offense, defense, everybody taking care of the ball. But on defense, man, we just want to have that relentless mindset, that hunt mindset that everybody's nonstop, everybody rallying to the ball. And that's one thing that coach always preaches is everybody gets to the ball, everybody's swarming, just having that relentless mindset. J.J. Watt, one of your mentors, spoke to the team this week, honored at halftime today. How sweet is it to get your first home win in front of a guy like J.J. Watt? Man, it means everything. J.J. had a bunch of good words for us to say, and it, it just, like, resonated with me. He just said, like, we really in the NFL, and that's what I feel like the guys really understood that. Like, we really here, like, why not give it your all? And that's what I've seen from the team today. Everybody giving it to y'all, every snap, every play, everybody just swarming and having fun and just being themselves. Is this just the beginning? This is just the beginning. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Enjoy this victory. You know, sometimes they say pets, dogs look like their owners. I think players sound like their coaches. And this coach is rubbing off on this young team playing with a lot of confidence right now. Specifically, C.J. Stroud, the most passing attempts without an interception to start his career, surpassed Warren Moon and continues to create space between one and the other. 151 times he's put it in the air, yet to be picked in his young career. in studio with Ryan Wilson, Joe Musso here. Uh, Ryan, uh, you are our draft expert, our draft analyst, and this goes from prospect to professional quite quickly. How have you processed that transition here for C.J. Stroud? Not as well as C.J. Stroud has been processing that <laughs> through the first four weeks because it has been so much fun to watch. Coming into this game, Joe, I'd watched every single one of his snaps. He has gotten better each and every week. Going back to the preseason, that opener against the Patriots where he threw an interception feels like it was two years ago. He has gotten so much better, so much quicker, and he's done it, Joe, with an injured, banged-up offensive line. No Laramie Tunsil today. And one thing I'll point out, and I was talking to my guy, Rick Spillman, about this on the With the First Big Podcast, that S2 test that he took, that the results came out back in uh, April before mm -hmm. the draft, that he he apparently didn't do well on you talk to people around the league and they will say that could have been it could have been that he didn't take it very seriously he could have been at the end of a long day where he'd done a bunch of tests but done a bunch of workouts the tests aren't the end all be all it is what you see on the field and i'll just say this at ohio state he had a bunch of first rounders blocking for him the offensive line has struggled because of injury. He is still balling out, and that's a testament to how good he's been. I never liked Scantrons either, so <laughs> it's, cool. he's passing the best test that's being presented to him week in and week out right now. On the other side, Pittsburgh Steelers, like we said, more questions than answers right now, including the health of their starting quarterback in Kenny Pickett. But prior to that injury even, the offense is anemic. There, there's really nothing to be found what is their step forward? Where do they go from here? A lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. Mike Tomlin will coach them to their ceiling, but that ceiling seems to be getting lower and lower each week. That's right, and they won some games, and you wonder if those were true wins that talked about the direction of this offense and this franchise, or were they just hollow wins, and it appears to be hollow wins that take nothing away from what the Texans did because they are a good young football team, but the offense has been an emic, and there's a couple reasons. It goes back to the offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, who continues to dial up plays that leave you scratching your head, and it goes to the inconsistent play of Kenny Pickett, who is now injured. We'll see how long that injury lasts. They did try to lean on Najee Harris, and if you want to take a positive from this, he did run the ball relatively well, but this is 1987. This is 2023. You're not going to win consistently with just a run game and a defense that's good, but can break sometimes instead of just bending. Not enough production, not enough points for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and a loss to the Houston Tex Texans, who might be more than just pesky moving ahead.